Welcome to Electro Online. Here's another interesting video on the JE Advanced Problem in Thermodynamics and involves what we would call not the PV diagram, they give us a VT diagram, a volume versus temperature diagram, but I always would suggest that whatever they give you in diagrams other than PV that we try to convert to a PV diagram. But let's lead the, read the problem and see what they're asking us to do. It says that one mole of a monatomic ideal gas goes through a thermodynamic cycle as shown in the volume versus temperature diagram. So here they show us we go from one to two to three to four back to one. And then they give us four statements and they tell us the correct statement is or are. It could be one or more or all of the statements could be correct. It's unlikely, I don't think they will ever have a situation where none of the statements are correct. So at least one of them is correct, but it could be more of them and it could be any combination of the statements. So, how do we work out a problem like this? Well, since they want us to figure out the work done in the cycle, I would suggest that we change it from a VT to a PV diagram because on a PV diagram when we have a cycle, the work done is the area inscribed by the, by the cycle. So let's convert. How do we do that? Well, we start with the PV equals NRT equation. And of course, in this case, N is equal to one because we're dealing with a monatomic ideal gas and one mole of a gas. Not that it's a monatomic, but that we have one mole. So that becomes PV equals RT. So then we go to state one right here where we have the initial volume to be V0 and the initial temperature to be T0. So let's figure out what P is in that case. So we also know that R is a constant. So we have P uh, at one is equal to RT at one divided by V at one. Well, T at one and V at one are V0 and T0. So we can write this as RT0 divided by V0. So P1 is equal to RT0 V0. All right. Let's call this R times P0. So at some point, we have what we call P0. And we have this right here, which corresponds to V0. And that's point number one. All right, let's see which direction it goes. Now let's go to P2. P2 is RT2 over V2. That's equal to R times T2 is twice T0. So T2 is two times T0. And V2, we go from one to two, is twice V0. So that's divided by two V0. The twos cancel out. And again, we end up with R times P0, which means that when we go from state one to state two, nothing changes. Uh, but V goes to twice the volume, right? So we go to twice the volume. So that's two V zero, but the pressure doesn't change. So we end up over here. This is state two. We go from one to two like that. Is that lined up? Yep, that's lined up. Okay, now for P3. That's R T3 divided by V3. And T3 is right here, we're back to Z T0. So that's equal to R times T0. And V3, uh, V3, we stay at 2V0, 2V0, which is equal to uh, R times 1 half P0, which means we now drop to half the pressure, but we're still at twice the volume. So we're still at twice the volume, half the pressure, that would put us right there on three. And this here, would be uh, half the pressure. And finally, we go to P4, that is equal to R times T4 over V4, which is equal to R times T4. It's right here, now we're back to half the temperature. So it would be one half the temperature. And V4, V4, right here, we're back to the original volume. That's V0, which is equal to R times one half T0 over V0, which is P0. So we're still at half the pressure, but now back to the initial volume. So we're back to over here. So this here would be uh, four. So we go one, two, three, four, and then back to one. 
So now we can see which of the four answers may or may not be correct. So the first one, it says work done in this thermodynamic cycle from 1 to 2, 3 to 4 to back, back to 1 is equal to 1 half RT0. Hmm. Is that true? Is the area on the need here equal to 1 half RT0? That's the question mark. So let's find out what the area is equal to. So the area is equal to the height which is a half a p0, a half a p0, and the width is the difference between this and this, which is v sub naught. So that's equal to the work done. Now, is that equal to 1 half rt0? Well, let's use the equation that pv is equal to r times t. So in this case, pv, p in 0, v0, is equal to r times t0, and we could replace P0, V0 by RT0, so we have area is equal to 1 half RT0, which is the work done, which is exactly what they're claiming in answer number A. So A is correct. We can put a check mark on that. All right, next. The above cycle exhibits only isochoric and adiabatic processes. Well, the advantage was that we converted to a PV diagram. And so here, this is what we call isochoric, but this is adiabatic, uh, not adiabatic. <laughs> uh, this is constant pressure, so this is uh, uh, isobaric. So we have isochoric, isobaric, isochoric, isobaric. We don't have an adiabatic process, so B cannot be correct. C, the ratio of heat transfer during process one to two and process 2 to 3 is 5 to 3. Now, before we answer that question, we have to think about it this way. We have to say, okay, we have a monatomic gas, we have N equals 1, and monatomic indicates that C is equal to 3 halves R. And that would be C sub V, of course. C sub P would be 5 halves R. C sub P would be equal to 5 over 2 R. Okay, knowing that, could we answer C? The ratio of heat transfer during process 1 to 2, and you know what, I'm going to need some room, so I'm going to get rid of some of this to make myself some room here. So going from 1 to 2, from 1 to 2, that's an isobaric process, we can say, so from 1 to 2, we can say that delta U is equal to Q minus W, I use minus W because I say work done by the gas, and uh, which means that uh, Q is equal to delta U plus W. So we get Q is equal to delta U, which is uh, N C sub V times delta T, plus the work done in this case is going to be pressure times change in volume, which is P sub naught V sub naught. Now this is 1, C sub V, so this is 1 times 3 over 2R, and delta T, going from 1 to 2, is T sub naught. And P sub naught times V sub naught, P sub naught times V sub naught, uh, let's see here, P sub V is R times T sub naught. So that ends up with 3 over 2 R T sub naught plus R T sub naught, that would be 5 over 2 R T sub naught. So going from 1 to 2, we have 5 over 2 RT sub naught for Q, the heat exchange. Wow, this is a lengthy process, isn't it? Now we go from 2 to 3. From 2 to 3, there is no work done. So there we can say that Q, so going from 2 to 3, Q is equal to the change in internal energy, which is equal to 1 times C sub V, which is 3 over 2 R times delta u from 2 to 3, 2 to 3 we go from t, 2t0 to 1t0, so that is times t0, which is equal to 3 over 2 rt sub 0. Okay, so now we have the change from 1 to 2, the change from 2 to 3, and they want to know if the ratio is 5 to 3. So is this ratio 5 to 3? Is 5 over 2 RT sub naught divided by 3 over 2 RT sub naught. That is indeed 
5 over 3 and so we see that this is a correct answer. Finally we need to do one more. We now need to go from 3 to 4 which is this process right here. So going from 3 to 4 so we can use the same principle um, because we can see that the um, the work done now, so we have n c sub v delta t, which is going to be going from 3 to 4. We have a change in the temperature of a half a t, so that would be n. So let me just write down q is equal to n c sub v delta t plus work done. And so n is 1, c sub v is 3 over 2r, so we're going from 3 to 4, and delta t is going from t sub naught to half t sub naught, so it's t sub naught divided by 2. Plus the work done, and of course that would be negative, right, because we're changing into a negative direction, that's a negative. And the work done is also going to be negative from 3 to 4, because we're going from right to left, that's work done by the gas, it's negative. And there we have 1 half p sub naught times the change in the volume which is a negative v sub naught, so it's a negative v sub naught. And p sub naught v sub naught can be written as rt sub naught. So here we have negative 3 over 4 rt sub naught minus, this is a 1 half rt sub naught, and so it would be 2 fourths, 3 fourths, that would be minus 7 fourths r t sub naught, and if we take the absolute value of that, because that's what they want, they want the absolute value, the ratio, um, then notice that we do not get one half when we do the ratio. Let's try that. Q one half is, Q one half is right here, so we have 5 over 2 r t sub naught divided by 7 over 4 r t sub naught, so that would be um, 3 and a half over 2, that's 5 over 3 and a half. And that means that this ratio is not correct. Wow, that was a lengthy process. I don't see how you can do this in three minutes. Hopefully you can take less time on the other problems. But yeah, this is kind of a difficult problem that takes a long time. So the first thing I did was go from a VT diagram to a PV diagram and then find the equivalent process on this diagram that mirrors this diagram. The next we had to figure out using the PV equals NRT equation, we had to find the equivalence for work done. So we have work done is the area on the curve, one half P sub naught V sub naught, and P sub naught V sub naught is R T sub naught, so we found that A was correct. B is not correct, we simply see that off the diagram there's no adiabatic process. For C, we have to do a lot of work. We have to figure out the change in internal energy, Q and W for 1 to 2. We have to do the same for process 2 to 3. When we took the ratio, we found that to be correct. And when we did the same thing for process from 3 to 4, the ratio did not match what they gave us, so that was not correct. But that is something that will definitely take more than 3 minutes for anyone, unless you can work extremely fast. And that is how it's done. Do you need to bring in another uh, thing to for him to sleep on?